Hey there, we're Nicole and Miko. We are full-time travelers, and in today's video, we are gonna be sharing with you our best packing tips and hacks for your next trip. By the way, we will link all the products that we talk about down in the description below. Our first tip has to do with overpacking. So we find that the easiest place to overpack is with our clothing. So to avoid that, we have packed essentially a capsule wardrobe, which is basically just like all of our clothing can be mixed and matched and layered together. We get this done by generally using neutral colors or solid colors or colors without a lot of pattern. Sometimes we have some pieces of clothing that have pattern pattern and like bright colors just to like spruce things up a bit. But generally speaking, I'm usually in the black or a white shirt. Basically the point of the capsule wardrobe is so that all of your tops can go with all of your bottoms and everything can just be mixed and matched. And building on this, the other way that we really save space is by only packing for a week. Of course, if you're traveling for less than a week, pack for less than a week. <laughs> but if you're traveling for more than one week, just pack for one week. And don't forget, you can also do your own laundry by hand. Nicole and I do this. We have a bucket and we also have a clothesline. And so sometimes we just take a day to do laundry inside our hotel or Airbnb and just have clothing strung up all around the room. It's a little bit messy and chaotic, but it works for us. And the other important thing to keep in mind is that you can buy everything you need on the road, especially for things like toiletries and first aid kits and new clothing. Like those are really easy items to just pick up along the way as you need them. So don't feel like you need to leave your home country with everything you're gonna need for the entire length of your trip. You're gonna need new toothpaste. That's okay, you can buy it wherever you're going. And speaking about clothing, our next tip is about this wonder fiber called <laughs> merino wool. You know, you've probably heard it online. Everybody loves merino wool and we do too. We believe that it's great for certain things and not great for others. We made a whole video where we talked about our kind of love and hate relationship for merino wool. We love that it's antimicrobial. We love that like you can just wear it almost endlessly. It doesn't it really get smell. wrinkly. It doesn't smell. It's easy to clean, quick to dry, all really good things. What we hate about it is the wear. We have just found that the merino wool clothing that we've had wears through so quickly. And it's really disappointing when you spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a product and it wears through in a few months. So our, yeah, our quick tip right there is that merino wool is amazing, but our second follow-up tip is you don't need it. Yeah. You can get by with, let's say, alternative fibers that are like half the cost. You don't necessarily need to spend hundreds of dollars on a week-long trip just because every vlogger out there said that you need merino wool. So don't worry. It is great for some technical things. Like I find it, it's awesome for like skiing, Yeah. Hiking. you know, hiking. But if you're on a long-term trip, you can get merino wool, but honestly, a t-shirt from Walmart, that, yeah. that works for us. For a 20th of the cost, it is fine. Yeah. All right, the next tip is about compression sacks. So, I got a compression sack that I absolutely love. I've learned that what this is best for is actually for like all of the clothing that I have that doesn't really match the environment I'm in. So when I go to a warmer country, I'll put all of my clothes that are meant for cold climates in here because I don't want to get into this thing every day. It's super annoying to use, but it's a great way to like just really compress my clothing and keep it really small for when I just, I just store it in my bag and I don't look at it for like two months because we're somewhere really nice and hot. But I still need the clothes because we might be going somewhere cold later. Okay, what about packing cubes? There's lots of talk about packing cubes. Yes or no? I'm a, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a packing cube lover. I do too. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually don't understand how you can go without packing cubes. Actually, wait, for backpacks, yes, on packing cubes, Yeah, for sure. We live out of backpacks, so we need packing cubes. Otherwise, it would just be like this gaping hole with, like I can't imagine, all I your clothes, imagine. all your socks, all your underwear, just I just can't imagine. Trees, it, 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 it would be a disaster. But we definitely use our packing cubes for all of our clothing to make sure everything stays really nice and organized. If you had a piece of luggage, I could see like one side is all your clothes yes. and you can fold them up properly and make it look nice. This is an example of a compression packing cube. So not only does it obviously hold all my clothing, but then there's a second zipper that I can wrap around it all to make it nice and thin and tiny. Now, what this does though, is make it really tight and like firm, you know? Nico yeah, hates I, that. I hate that. So I keep my, I have a similar type by Eagle Creek. I like it just laying my clothes flat and then also just making sure that it's got a little bit of room to like squeeze into the crevices of my backpack. Ooh, okay, another big debate actually is rolling clothes or not rolling your clothes. Oh so yeah, we differ in this too, actually. We do. So I would say a tip for packing is to roll your clothing. I think it saves space and I really need the space. Nico doesn't roll his clothes. No, I don't really need the space. And mm. I don't know, I find it annoying to roll clothes. I just like laying it flat. Rolling it does make it, again, like a bit more firm. It's a bit more compact. It's like really 
tight. Yeah. And I think that you don't like that. Yeah, and that's I like true. That. Be before YouTube, we had we were traveling full time with like a 38 liter backpack, so space was definitely a lot more of an issue. And I did roll my clothes a lot more, Ooh. but like since we got bigger backpacks, carry all the camera gear and all that stuff. Um, I don't find that's really ne as necessary. So if you're tight in space, roll your clothes. If not, you know, just live your life like, <laughs> like normal. Roll free. Roll free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so one problem I do have though, because I roll my clothing, is a lot of wrinkles. Oh yeah. I think my clothes wrinkle a lot more because I roll them than Nikos do laying flat. But I came up with like the most ingenious solution, okay? So my tip, if you're dealing with any wrinkly clothes, for no matter how you pack, is actually to get like a tiny little bottle that has a spray nozzle on it. Anytime you've got wrinkly clothes, just spritz it with water from the tap. Hang it up to dry or just like give it a little swoosh, whatever you call that, you know? Yeah. And uh, it'll, it, like, de-wrinkles, it's like magic. And I don't need any fancy products, I don't yeah. need anything from the store. You don't need heat, either. Don't need heat. I wouldn't say it's, like, perfect, like, you're not going to, like, a fancy dinner with it, but, like, nine times out of ten, if you just want to de-wrinkle your clothes because you're heading out mm -hmm. and seeing the city, um, and a little spritzer bottle thingy, Nicole certified <laughs> water spritzer de-wrinkler, that works just fine. All right, the next hot debate we'll talk about is to do with photos. So is it better to bring a phone to take photos or should you bring like a real fancy camera? The phones these days definitely have a good argument because like the newest phones are great cameras. They're slim, they're easy to pack. You don't have to really worry about it. You need your phone anyway. You need your phone anyway, <laughs> so that is great. For us, I think a real camera is better. I mean, obviously we're biased we make YouTube videos, but we actually started, when we first started traveling full time, the first six months, we only had our phone cameras and yeah. we actually really regret it. We did some incredible things. Like, I mean, the thing that comes to mind is we hiked Everest Base Camp yeah. with our it, cell phone with cameras. And now I look back and I'm like, why did we just bring a cell phone for like, Everest Base Camp. It's actually such a shame. If you're going to beautiful places and seeing beautiful things, like you need a beautiful way to capture them these mm -hmm. days. And mm -hmm. so I really regret that like, sure, we got nice photos on our phone, but like they're phone cameras or they're phone you, photos. You can tell. You can really tell. And I think about bringing those back and maybe framing them one day if we have a home again. And like, it's just not gonna look the same as if we took a proper camera. If you have the space, of course the money, cameras are not cheap. If you've already got one lying around at home or maybe you can borrow one from a friend, we do highly recommend you get a proper camera. This next tip is a little bit random. Um, we like the hero clips. This is just like a carabiner slash hook, two in one. And it doesn't really seem like, like it would make any difference in your travels, but we've actually used it a lot more than we expected. Either yeah. just what? Nico uses it all the time. Yeah, he <laughs> like, all the time. Hanging up like a backpack that you don't want on the floor, or hanging up some clothing because you don't have any hangers. Hanging up our laundry line, laundry actually. Line. Yeah. It's surprisingly handy, and it's really tiny. And yeah. I, I don't know. I personally, that's it's my tip. We use it all the time. All right, another packing hack that I specifically use is actually to not bring things intentionally from your home country so that you can buy them on the road as a souvenir for yourself. I left for a couple years of travel with no jewelry, and the whole point of that was so that I could get things along the way on the road that I love that now remind me of those countries that I bought those items in, and I get to wear them, right? They're like, I get to show them off and show people the cool things that I've got and then tell a story about where I've been. And I know a lot of people also do this with clothing, I think, right? So if you bring a few less items than you think you need, get yourself a nice dress or a t-shirt or something along those lines on the road while you're out and about. And then it's something you need and it's a souvenir. Another really big space saving tip for me has been to make the change from liquid shampoo and conditioner and body wash to solid shampoo, conditioner and bar soap. Game changer. Game changer. It, especially for somebody with longer hair, like I just go through way less shampoo and conditioner when it's in bar form. It lasts me way, way longer. And same with, of course, body wash. Now we just use bar shampoo. It's cheap, you can get it everywhere. It's better for the environment. And then we also have these incredible matador soap packs that we absolutely love that keep all of our soap products, our bar soap products, dry. So after we've used either my shampoo and conditioner or our bar soap, uh, we just pop it into the matted or soap pack as wet as it wants to be, and it dries on the go no matter what we're doing. So it's like magic. It does. It I don't honestly, know how it dries it. I don't know how either. It feels like total <laughs> magic, but it's absolutely game, game changer, and it really allows me to just use my bar shampoo and conditioner without any fuss. So the next tip is if you're somebody who's going to be on a trip where you're expecting to be in a lot of, let's say, like hostels or shared bathrooms or even just Airbnbs, uh, we always pack shower shoes. And that's because we don't always trust what's on the floor when you're taking a shower. 
So I just wear like regular flip-flops, super cheap, super easy, super easy to pack. So yeah. typically we use our flip-flops as like an indoor shoe. We wear them inside our apartments, in the shower. Um, but then when needed, we also can just throw them to the beach. Now to keep all of our stuff clean when we have things like wet shower shoes or dirty sneakers, we also highly recommend you get some shoe covers. We love shoe covers because it doesn't matter what condition our shoes are in, we can pack them away and put them into our backpacks. And if needed, you can wash the shoe covers. So if they do get really muddy or something, just chuck them in the wash, get them clean again. That's how we haven't washed ours in like a long time. Like ever. But you could. But you could if you wanted That's to. important. <laughs> okay, another quick tip is if you are packing shoes inside your backpack or luggage, don't forget there's a little bit of space inside your shoe. Small things like socks or underwear or like bulky, tiny things like that are weird to pack like a like a universal travel adapter and Nicole always puts that in there. I put a GoPro inside my shoe. There's always a little bit of space there if you need it. Be sure to bring with you a reusable tote. We absolutely love our reusable tote. Most of the time we use it when we're getting on like a bus or a plane and we wanna bring with us some of those bulkier items like extra sweaters, I bring extra socks, lots of extra snacks. Snacks, <laughs> always, snack bag. Always snacks. Um, and it's not gonna fit in our little day packs or we don't want them to be jam packed and full because they're not a lot of fun to use when they're that full. So we just bring the tote bag. We stick everything extra in there and then we keep it with us right above us on a plane or a train. You can also use it as a great beach bag and you can also use it as a grocery bag so that you don't have to use as much plastic. This next tip is for travelers who are expecting to be in beach destinations. If there's a lot of sand in your future and water, we highly recommend you get yourself a dry bag. Now we got a dry bag just while we were on the road and we actually are using it a lot more than I expected, especially because we're on boats a lot and sometimes they don't tell you, but just water just splashes up on you depending on the kind of boat you're in. So having an actual dry bag to kind of keep our clothing and like camera stuff dry is definitely very useful. Possibly my favorite thing I pack is my scarf. I use this for every sort of occasion. I use this as a pillow on the beach. I use this as a mat on the beach. Mostly I use it as a blanket on travel days. And I also use it as a cover either for my shoulders or my legs if we're going to temples and I want to wear shorts. I absolutely love this thing. I highly suggest that if you are a woman that you get something like this to have with you or for someone who gets really cold bring this with you as well. Something we recommend for anybody traveling with a backpack is a backpack cover. And the reason for this is twofold. So firstly, a backpack cover is usually a rain cover as well. So when you get wet, you just stick it on, keep all your stuff dry. But honestly, what we use our covers more for is actually when we check in our backpacks on either a flight or like underneath a bus or actually, even honestly in a lot of taxis, we cover our backpack with our pack cover to keep it from getting dirty. It can be surprisingly dirty uh, when you put things inside the luggage hold of a bus. I have no idea why, but things always come out a lot dirtier than when they went in. And then for a plane as well, you don't necessarily want all those straps to be flailing around or causing any issues, get caught or anything like that. So having like a pack cover to just tighten everything up is absolutely essential. This next step is actually kind of exciting because it's one that we've never heard before, but we've kind of recently discovered ourselves. And it's to do with all the popular buzz with AI right now. So right now there are a lot of cool websites out there that generate information for you from AI or artificial intelligence. We've used the one that's really popular, it's called ChatGPT. And you could actually ask it very specific things that will help you prepare and plan for your trip. So for example, if you are going to the Amazon, you can ask ChatGPT, I'm going to the Amazon, I'll be there for two weeks, what should I pack? And it'll actually give you a pretty decent list of all the things that you should pack for a two week trip to the Amazon. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's perfect. I think you're gonna need to do a little bit more other research as well. Look at blogs or vlogs or what have you. But it's a really cool place to start to get an idea specifically for trips that are really particular and are gonna require some specific gear like the Amazon or a really big hike, maybe to ever space camp or something like that. If you're interested in a more detailed overview of everything that we pack to travel, head down in the description for our full packing video and packing list. Thanks for watching.